Enzymes are proteins that act as biological catalysts in living organisms and this basically means our enzymes speed up the many different biological processes and reactions that take place within our organism. Now enzymes are very sensitive and that basically means that the functionality and the rate of activity of enzymes does not only depend on non-protein molecules such as cofactors, the functionality and activity of enzymes also depends on the actual environment surrounding that protein molecule. Now, three major factors influence the enzyme's activity and functionality, and these are temperature, the acidity level, so the pH level, as well as the concentration of the substrate. So let's examine each one of these factors and see how they influence our proteins, our enzymes functionality. So let's begin with temperature. Now increasing the temperature of the surroundings in which our protein enzyme is actually found in generally initially increases the rate or the activity of our enzyme and this is primarily because by increasing the temperature we give the substrate more energy so that it has more energy to basically overcome that activation barrier. Now the problem with increasing the temperature high or increasing the temperature continually is our proteins have tertiary structure and remember that at a high enough temperature the proteins tertiary structure can break down and this and at this point we say the protein is denatured and it no longer functions because the tertiary structure is basically the structure that determines the functionality of that protein and because enzymes are proteins we see that if eventually the rate of activity of enzymes reaches a certain point at which it has a maximum activity rate and increasing the temperature past this point will denature or break down the tertiary structure of that enzyme and lower that enzyme's activity sharply. Now one example is the human body. The human body has a core temperature of about 37 degrees Celsius and this is because most of the proteins, the majority of the proteins, our enzymes in the human body function optimally at this temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So increasing the temperature will increase the rate until we go up to this optimal temperature and by increasing it further we see that our activity of that enzyme which is the y-axis will jar, will uh, draw drop sharply. Now, this is basically exactly why it's dangerous to have a fever because when our body temperature increases, we can basically damage our proteins, our enzymes found in the body. Now, ironically, this is also a mechanism by which our body kills off bacterial cells. So when we're sick, the mechanism by which our body kills off the bacterial cells is by increasing the temperature of our body. This basically causes the protein in the bacterial cells to basically denature and that decreases the activity and functionality of our enzymes found in bacterial cells. Now let's move on to our acidity level. So how exactly does the pH or the concentration of hydrogen ions uh, affects our functionality and activity of proteins of our enzyme. So the concentration of hydrogen ions, the pH, can also affect the activity of enzymes. For instance, the human body actually spends a lot of its energy in making sure that the pH of the blood as well as other systems, other fluids within our body remains at a specific level and at times it can basically change the pH of certain fluids, uh, fluid areas within our body to basically activate or deactivate certain enzymes. So for instance, the human body spends a good amount of energy to keep the fluid environment at a specific pH in order to ensure that different enzymes basically function effectively and properly. Now, 
The enzymes in our blood, for example, require a pH of about 7.4. And if the pH fluctuates even a small amount, the enzymes will basically lose their functionality. And this can be a very deadly scenario. Now, another case is our stomach and small intestine. So our stomach, unlike the blood, actually functions at, or our stomach contains a relative acidic environment. And this is because a lot of our protein enzymes, for example, uh, pepsin, found in the stomach function at a low pH. For example, pepsin functions optimally at a pH of about 2. Now, if we examine and study the small intestine, which basically contains the enzymes that are involved in breaking down the macromolecules into their constituent parts, which are then ingested into our blood. So basically enzymes in the small intestine function optimally at a slightly basic pH of about 8.0. Now, if the pH changes in either direction, the activity of our enzyme will basically decrease symmetrically as shown in the following diagram. Notice in this case, we have a sharp drop, but in this case, we have the same exact slope on both sides. So basically, if this y-axis is the rate of activity of the enzyme and the x-axis is our pH, at a pH of about 8.0, uh, 8 the enzymes in our small intestine, such as chymotrypsin and trypsin, basically function optimally at this pH of 8.0. But if we decrease or increase our pH, the activity of those enzymes will drop as shown by these decreasing slopes. Now, the final factor that we want to discuss is the concentration of the substrate. So, let's suppose that we begin with a relatively small quantity of substrate as well as some fixed amount of our enzyme. And this basically means that initially most of our active sites on our enzymes are actually empty. Now, as we begin to increase the amount of substrate, as we begin to increase the concentration of our substrate, more and more of the active sites will be occupied, will be filled, and that will increase the overall rate of our reaction. Eventually, however, we will reach a point at which all the active sites on all our enzymes are filled and, and at that point, our reaction, our enzyme activity has reached a maximal rate and this is known as the maximum velocity or Vmax and the enzyme at this point is said to be saturated and by increasing the concentration of substrate at this point, we are basically not affecting the rate of our activity of the enzyme because all those active sites of all the enzymes are actually filled up or occupied. Now, let's take a look at the following diagram briefly. So, our uh, y-axis is the velocity, which is basically another way of saying the rate or activity of that enzyme. Now, the x-axis represents the concentration of substrate. So, notice as we go to the right along the x-axis, we increase the concentration, and as we go up along the y-axis, we increase the velocity or the rate of activity of that enzyme. Now, this slope shown in purple basically describes the relationship between the concentration of substrate as well as the velocity or rate of activity of our enzyme. So notice initially, we have a relatively linear relationship between the concentration and the velocity. So initially, as we increase the concentration, our rate or velocity also increases pretty much linearly. Now, eventually, we we reach this point here and this point basically represents something known as KM and KM is basically a constant known as the Michaelis constant.
constant. Now, the Michaelis constant basically represents the concentration of the substrate that basically uh, makes sure that exactly half of the active sites are completely filled for that particular enzyme. And at this point, our velocity is given by V1 half. So V1 half corresponds to the velocity or the rate of activity of the enzyme when exactly half of the active sites of all the enzymes are basically occupied by our substrate. So the point at which exactly half of the enzyme active sites are being used up or are being occupied is given by a constant given by Km known as the Michaelis constant. At this point, the velocity is given by V1 half. Now, we're going to discuss this in much more detail when we get into biochemistry, but at this point, I simply want to mention the following important idea about this Michaelis constant. So, the Michaelis constant Km does not actually depend on the concentration. What it depends on is the type of enzyme that we are dealing with. So, the Michaelis constant basically gives us information about the affinity or the attraction of the enzyme to our substrate. So, a very low Km value for any given enzyme means that the enzyme has a very high affinity for the substrate because a low Km means a small amount, a small quantity of concentration of substrate basically is required to fill up exactly half of our enzyme active sites. And conversely, a high Km value, a high Michaelis constant, for a given enzyme means that we need a lot of substrate to actually fill exactly half of those active sites of our enzyme. So basically, these are the three factors that play a role in affecting the activity and the functionality of the enzyme. We have temperature, we have the pH level, as well as the concentration of our substrate.